In the anime of Hell's Paradise, Gabimaro represents fire, and the soul of Sagari represents wood. But where did these elements come from, and what fuels these connections? So Hell's Paradise draws extensively from East Asian religions, and they also draw from East Asian concepts. So the Wuxing Five Elements diagram is a real thing and it plays a huge part in Hell's Paradise, not only through the healing cycles or the generative cycles, but also in the destruction or counteraction cycles. So one of the things that I truly believe is in order to enjoy a film properly or to understand it as the author intended it, you do have to understand some concepts, some nuances, so today I want to briefly unpack and break down the Chinese five elements diagram and talk to you about how they use it in the modern circles with martial arts, with cosmology, with seasons and with internal medicine even and how that translates to Hell's Paradise where the characters themselves each have a unique element. So to start off, the Wuxing five elements diagram is an essential concept in traditional Chinese philosophy, period. You see, the elements of Wuxing are associated with different seasons and it makes for a versatile and relatable way to talk about seasons in analogous ways that Westerners aren't really familiar with. Further that, in the martial arts, these diagrams illustrate flows of techniques, how energy is broken, how energy is manipulated or moved, and also in Chinese medicine, where it represents the harmony within the body. And I think one of the best examples of this is within their acupuncture frameworks. So I'm gonna zoom out and explain this simply first. The Wuxing diagram itself is based on wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. There are generally two accepted cycles here, the generating cycle and the overcoming or the destruction cycle. There are more. For instance, if you wanted to unpack them in a more specific way, there is inter-promoting, there's also weakening, inter-regulating, overreacting, and counteracting. So counteracting specifically deals with martial skill a lot of the time, and you'll see that a lot in Hell's Paradise. So here in terms of the generating cycle, wood feeds fire, fire produces earth, earth bears metal, metal collects water, and water nourishes wood. So now I'll talk about the destructive cycle. So here wood grasps or stabilizes earth, earth contains or directs water, water dampens or regulates fire, fire melts, refines or shapes metal, and metal chops or carves wood. So when talking about what you need to know for Hell's Paradise, I think you can pretty much stop there. It does get infinitely complex, again, because there's interpromoting, weakening, interregulating, overacting, and counteracting, which of course can create multivariable equations that get pretty bonkers, if you ask me. And this is why some of the Taoist diagrams, especially specifically dealing with cosmologies, kind of sprawl out and become infinitely complex, if you will. So I think it's really noteworthy to kind of recognize that Sagari is wood and Gabimaru is fire. And of course that interaction is gonna play out in significant ways and I don't wanna ruin it for folks who have not read the manga, but in the anime, we're still yet to see the depth of that. So in summary, Hell's Paradise has borrowed a real thing, which is the Wuxing Five Elements Diagram, and really turned it into a storytelling vehicle that lets you kind of explore some of these interactions in a fantastical way, and a way in which you wouldn't explore them in real life. Ways that are gonna be far more complex than what would happen in real life, because these folks are ninjas and they have ninpo and they can fly around and have ridiculous powers. So adding those variables to an already infinitely complex equation gives you some kind of crazy function that I'm just not familiar with or some kind of diagram, right? But the point is, it's really fun to unpack this and really fun to think about this because so if you're from East Asian society and it's part of your formative years and you kind of just generally understand this, then it's gonna match what you see and how you kind of absorb the source material. And I've been fortunate enough to be in the martial world for long enough to have, you know, Kung Fu brothers and Sifus that have explained this to me time and time again to understand the principles at stake and the principles at play and the interplay between the two kind of things, specifically for you know, style variations, style aggression, style counter aggression, you know, the difference between rising power and sinking power, uh, breaking and healing, all these kind of things, right? So if you're not familiar with that, then hopefully this primer helped you understand kind of some of the significance of this Wuxing 
five elements diagram. And if you have any questions, I don't know if I can answer them, but I think uh, go ahead and leave them in the comments anyways, and we can talk about it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.